is the North Africa Journal and thank you for downloading this podcast. For more podcasts, information and user rules, please visit north-africa.com slash podcast. With a wider look now at the unrest in the Middle East, not only in Bahrain, but in other nations such as Yemen and Libya. We're joined by Alessandro Bruno. He is the deputy editor of the North Africa Journal. And Alessandro, we just touched on the Shia, the Sunni makeup in Bahrain. Why is that such a key and critical factor? The government says this is the reason for the crackdown. They don't want division or sectarian violence. Can you explain the significance? Well, uh, you remember Iraq? Uh, Iraq was also Shia Sunni, mostly mm -hmm. Shia, and Bahrain is a sort of mini Iraq with a benevolent uh, uh, dictatorial regime. Um, the regime in, in Bahrain is uh, one of the better ones in the Middle East. It's not; it doesn't have the, the, the bad record of the others, and um, it's actually very internationally uh, um, important for even for tourism. There is a Grand Prix, the first Grand Prix, uh, you know, the Formula One Grand Prix of the season is in Bahrain. I'll probably have to move that. Um, but um, the Shia divisions, most the protests really are a bit different than those in Cairo uh, and those in uh, Tunis. Um, it's I think it's more sectarian than they're letting uh, than the, the, the per report I heard before. Uh, the the main complaint is that the top positions uh, in in companies and government uh, jobs are given to Sunnis. Same problem that we had in Iraq um, under Saddam Hussein. Mm -hmm. So there, the Shias are protesting and have protested long time ago. Uh, there have been several protests over, over the years. It's just that now there's a lot of attention on the region. So we're getting more uh, and they realize that and I think that's what's raising the profile. But things are complicated by the fact that obviously as we mentioned a key US naval base there yep. uh, the, the country has been a key ally for the United States mm -hmm. and there is the joint you know concern over Iran what is the significance I mean Iran has a large Shia uh, population as well so the concern for the government of Bahrain is growing influence from Iran mm -hmm. in their nation right? Precisely well um, uh, in 1979, after the Iranian Revolution, one of the countries that was closest to falling to that uh, same uh, you know, revolution, uh, when the Ira Iran threatened to export it, was Bahrain. So Bahrain is um, you know, at the key of this dispute, but there's a lot of concern in the Persian Gulf about Iran's influence over uh, Shia minorities uh, in, that exist in various countries of the Gulf. Uh, um, I would like to mention the, the, the most uh, interesting one here for uh, strategic uh, reasons mm -hmm. is Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia has an important Shiite uh, minority with a lot of grievances against the, the government, uh, which uh, mostly concentrated in the north uh, eastern part of the country, very close to Bahrain, and also very close to some of uh, Saudi's uh, main uh, oil fields. So uh, there's a big security problem here if, right. if the Shias in, in Saudi Arabia decide to revolt as well. And Kuwait also has a small... Well, and, and you talk about Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, many people yeah. would say Libya, another nation with huge oil reserves. Yeah. Uh, what about Libya? We're, we're hearing reportedly as many as 20 dead already, and many people yeah. are watching Libya. Uh, what's the, you know, the potential for well, serious unrest here? No, no Shiites in Libya, but Libya has another problem. Uh, Libya is um, a country built on tribal ba balance. And you've noticed uh, that most of the protests have been in a particular area of Libya. They've been all in eastern Libya, Cyrenaica, the, uh, Benghazi, and another city called El Beida and Adjadabria, all cities in eastern Libya. Uh, eastern Libya, called Cyrenaica, is uh, the home of the former monarchy, the, the monarchy that Gaddafi, the current ruler, deposed in 1969. There's always been a problem between Gaddafi and Eastern Libya. Hmm. Uh, so and mo there have been lots of protests before. I actually lived in Libya in the 90s, and uh, most of the, the tensions always came from that part of the, uh, the country. Most of the Islamists were con concentrated there. So I'm not surprised that the protests are uh, really uh, heating up in, in that city. Um, so, Alessandro, let me yeah. ask you quickly, because you and I were talking, you know, in the past couple of weeks, okay, mm -hmm. such a major breakthrough, many people would say, with a change in leadership in Egypt, is that a harbinger for what will happen in other Mideast nations? 
Uh, are you any closer to an answer on that? Because we're seeing real government crackdown in other countries. We're not seeing uh, a regime that's going to just give up the keys, so to speak, here. No. Um, see, Egypt has a particular set of circumstances. Uh, in Egypt, uh, there are some movements in civil society started to move against Mubarak already six years ago with the, uh, 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 one of, uh, a couple of movements. And uh, then there was the, the, the jailed opposition leader, Ayman al-Nur. And then there was the rumors, uh, there was the, the, the rumors over Mubarak's health. So there was a lot of leverage already building. And then the final blow, I think, was the elections in November. And the fact that the army itself lost confidence in Mubarak because Mubarak insisted on wanting to put his son to replace him as a presidential candidate for the NDP uh, in September. So we had a, a, you know, a, a internal opposition as well. It's going to be much more difficult in other countries to achieve that effect, particularly for example, Libya is very loose uh, association. There's no real, the government doesn't have that. It's not really a government. Uh, it's a, it ruled, the, the main uh, glue there is tribal balance. Uh, Gaddafi heads one, the second largest tribe. There's a lar uh, uh, another tribe called the Warfala, and then there are the, um, the ones in, in the uh, eastern part of the country. Mm -hmm. So I don't see that the, the breakdown there is more difficult. And Gaddafi has a lot of money mm -hmm. to pay off tribal leaders to put down the revolts if he wants Right, and to. many people have been saying he has very good and close association with those tribal leaders as well. Yeah. So, as you mentioned, in entirely different scenarios in many cases in these nations. Yeah. We'll continue to watch it. Alessandro Bruno with the North Africa Journal. Good to see you again. Thank, Thank you. you. This was the North Africa Journal podcast. Thank you for listening.